Okay, it's uh, time to put together part two of the video of uh, putting together this beginner level locomotive kit from Roundhouse, the tank engine, the 060 tank engine. It's Bruce here. And uh, I have to start by introducing you to two, well, let's call them stunt doubles that are going to play a role in this part of the video uh, for the star of the game, um, or star of the show, I should say, um, the tank engine itself. Uh, this is the 060 Roundhouse uh, engine that has the a tender associated with it, so it's going to play a role in this second uh, video. And uh, I think even this little um, 040 uh, shifter from Mantua will play a little role uh, in illustrating uh, what part two would have illustrated using the star of the show if I hadn't discovered after the fact that some of the video parts that I had done were unusable. Now they were unusable for two different reasons. Shows you my creativity. Uh, in one of them, uh, the entire uh, work that I was doing was off camera. Um, it was one of those instances that you've seen on some of my videos where I zoomed in to show something and didn't and did not zoom back out and so I was working off to the left of the screen not being able to illustrate much uh, other than uh, you listening to my voice while well, you could see the back of uh, my right hand. So that was one. The other one was uh, I thought I turned the video on and apparently I hadn't pushed the button down far enough so nothing was caught. So I'll be refilming those using the stunt doubles because by the time I figured out what was going on the star of the show was in this shape where everything was assembled and uh, as much as I would like to show you on the uh, tank engine itself I am not about to um, take apart all of that work and build it back up when it's running so well right now I think I'd be pushing my luck so uh, yeah the star will play a little role in this video but the stunt doubles would be playing a role too so on with the show. Okay, it's time for the stunt doubles to just jump in for a minute. The key to getting any locomotive kit <coughs> running freely is to test everything multiple times before going on to the next step. You saw how long I worked on the uh, axle receptacles in the bottom of the uh, frame for this tank engine uh, because this unlike many kits this tank engine kit this roundhouse kit did not have any provision for any kind of bearings for the axles no brass inserts or true bearings or anything like that so you needed to really get those grooves nice and smooth and the axles running good in them before you went on to the next step and that next step would typically be to get the side rods uh, on and uh, running freely as well. <clears throat> you saw in, in part one uh, how I cleaned up those side rods uh, getting all the flash and everything off. What I didn't do uh, well in that and explain well was uh, what to do to clean out the pre-drilled holes or punched holes, whatever they did, uh, in, the, uh, in the connecting rods. <clears throat> and that's where your round file comes in. And uh, all, the, all the round files I have, except for the ones I'll call um, you know, diamond impregnated files, anyone that has grooves cut into it, typically if you insert it and go turn it clockwise, it's going to dig deeper and deeper into the metal. And that's true on a small round file like this or on a larger round file like this. If you turn it clockwise, it's going to dig in. If you turn it counterclockwise, it's just going to rub against the inside of the hole and clean out any flash. And that's basically what you want to do the majority of the time. So 
remember that. You don't want to dig deeper and deeper and deeper into the hole, enlarging the hole. Uh, you just want to clean the flash out. Once you have the connecting rods cleaned up, what you want to do is put them onto um, two of the wheels fastened using whatever their form of fastening the, the rods on. And we've talked about that. Sometimes it's a rivet, sometimes it's a screw, sometimes it's a pin. Uh, this, is, this one, and this is that uh, Roundhouse 060 that has the tender, is even a little bit different. You can see on this uh, rear driver they have a plastic extension coming out. Uh, normally, on most kits, that's not the case. What they have is a longer screw or pin for that uh, rear driver because that's going to have both the connecting rod and the main rod attached to it. So it's going to have to have provisions for holding two rods in place. So normally it's either a longer screw with a uh, round shank near the top, unthreaded, or a, a larger rivet, or, or in this case they have the plastic. But what you're going to do next is start to get the connecting rod running freely first on one side and then on the other. So in this case we have to put it on the rear driver because they have the plastic pin there. Normally I would not go to the rear driver first. I would probably do um, the middle uh, driver, the geared one first, with the front one. Once you get those two connected with the screw or whatever, before going any further, before putting the third one in, you just wheel those around trying to see if they go freely. So here's that little uh, 040 shifter. Just t Once you get the connecting rod um, in place with two uh, two screws and picture a third set here. You just turn it around and make sure that it's going freely. And if it isn't, you remove it immediately and you work on one of the holes. And I wouldn't play around with the middle hole because that's going to affect both sides. I would, uh, if I had this on, let's say the front driver in the center, I would take it out and work on the hole from the front driver kind of elongating it a little bit. So now you might want to go clockwise and, and try to make it a little bit larger. Put it back on and try it again. In all likelihood it will now run smoothly. Uh, and then you go on to uh, putting the uh, connecting the third driver and trying to do the same thing. You want every one of these to to run smoothly before you finally put it in place. Once you do you go to the other side and you repeat the process. Okay, so you put it normally in the center driver on a, on a loco like this and the front and then once you get those running you put it on the rear as well. This one you'd have to start with the rear because of these pins. Um, okay, so that's what you do. And every step you try it out and if You've got to keep it freewheeling with every new step or you're going to have a problem later on. Don't assemble anything permanently until everything has been tested, tested, tested. Okay, so that was one of the things that uh, we missed earlier on. So I'm going to shut this off now and continue with the video. You'll either see part of the actual build or you'll see the stunt doubles again. Talk to you. Okay, picking up with uh, the construction of the valve gear and the side rods on this little tank engine. The next step is to insert the guide rods <coughs> for the crossheads uh, into the cylinder casting. Uh, and the idea is to place these little square guide rods into the square holes that they've cut into this Delrin and then tap them gently down into place 
and uh, for some reason I am a little more cautious because of the Delrin than if this was a, uh, a metal casting. But uh, so far so good. And what you have to do is just kind of by eye get these all lined up. Now I've already tapped the other three in and uh, I just got to get this one in place. I think that's good. And we will just test it out here. All right, so I am going to add a little bit of uh, super glue to where these rods go into the Delrin, and uh, keep those in place. There's the first one. And the second one, I'll just let that set. Now one of the things on these little tank engines that you might run into uh, when it comes to the uh, guide rods here is that um, as the main rods go back and forth they can rub against the guide rods and so you have to uh, take your file and just angle those a little bit so they don't rush uh, rub. So that all looks good. Just going to let that dry and I'll be back. Okay, once again we have the stunt double and we want to talk about the next step after you have both side rods, uh, both connecting rods I should say, uh, permanently in place. Now I am not putting these permanently in place on uh, this stunt double because this model uses pins not uh, threaded screws and I don't want to uh, be pulling those pins in and out unnecessarily. So you're just going to have to picture that the connecting rods are in place. And I would normally do this step also after the guide rods are in the uh, cylinder assembly. But for now I am just going to uh, say that the next step once you get both sides the connecting rods running very smoothly is you take one of the <coughs> main rods and put it in place. And just like on the model, uh, the tank engine that we're working on, this roundhouse model has uh, uh, two pieces that go together that are going to slide onto uh, the guide rods up here. But we're just going to put it into the cylinder for the moment. To simulate what's going on and connect it onto that rear axle. And with that in place, what you would do is spin everything to make sure that it is also running in and out properly. Okay, now you got a picture that you also have this um, crosshead onto the crosshead guides. And you would do that, and if there's any binding, you have to stop and see whether it's because the crosshead's are binding on the guides there, 
or whether um, this rod here that's going into the cylinder is causing the problem or whether it's the, the hole in the uh, main rod on the back. You debug that, you get it running smoothly, you put it on permanently, you go to the other side. So all of that took place before I did the final assembly of the uh, running gear on the uh, tank lo locomotive. Okay, with the uh, cylinder assembly and the guide rods uh, being held temporarily in place with a, uh, a bolt up front here, I've gotten one side complete just to, to show you. Um, so the main rod with the uh, cross heads on the end in place here. The yoke is still just flopping here because I have to put the other side on. But uh, so now we're going to come around to this side and we're going to thread the main rod. Um, let's get that into the cylinder here. go and we can try to get the yoke into position here oh, it seems like you could use another set of hands That seems to have gotten it. Now I should get that screw in there before I lose that. Let's get this into the into the yoke. at least temporarily in place. And then I'll try to get the main rod and the last screw of the connecting rod lined up with the hole in that rear driver. And you put one of the long brass screws in that has a collar on it the main rod to uh, cycle on. And hopefully it's still lined up here. And you might have noticed that the uh, connecting rods and the uh, main rods now are all painted steel color. And it seems like everything is still operating the way it should. Binding here. That seems to be operating properly. And that seems to be operating properly. You can see when you get it down to this position that if I had not 
filed the uh, guide rods to that 45 degree angle, the main rod would be touching it right there. So that becomes uh, a must do here. So uh, let's see if we can get that back where you can see it pretty good. At least now we have uh, the rods moving freely. And you can see that without my hands in the way. So it's going pretty good. I'm going to put a little bit of lubrication on the, the side rods now and uh, get ready to uh, test out the, uh, the motor and get the motor in place. So let me just add a little bit of lubrication to every joint in the uh, the rods here. Then we still have to install the uh, valve reverse rod which we already know is only for looks. I actually went with the uh, stainless steel wire rather than the brass wire. I'm sure the brass would have worked too but Okay, what I was trying to show in uh, that last part of the video was how I determined how long to make these return rods. Um, and I just put the yoke uh, temporarily in place, measured the distance from the cylinder to the yoke. You want it to extend a little bit. And so I determined that one inch long was good enough. So I cut uh, two pieces of the steel wire to one inch in length and then uh, inserted them in place and held them in place with some super glue. Half the time I was off screen, the other half of the time I think my uh, hand was in the way. So that should explain that. Now we will... Insert these again. See if I can't So I got that wire threaded and I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, Super glue on the very end, and now continue threading it until it goes into the hole in the cylinder casting. And that's all it does, it's just there for looks. So once that's set in place, I'll just put a dab of glue on this side too, which I will do with my pin applicator here, right where it goes through the yoke. And we'll let that dry. We'll do the same thing on the other side. And then the uh, valve gear assembly is done and uh, we can work next on uh, installing the motor so uh, I'll talk to you then okay with the motor in place now and uh, 
the wiring just temporary. I just want to see whether we have a working situation here. And it's looking pretty good. Low speed, fast speed. All right, now let's see if it goes the other direction. Slow speed and faster speed. All right, I did have to put a little shim under the front of the motor to get the uh, gears engaging just the right amount. Just took a piece of 3x5 car, doubled it over, cut it to the proper width and length, and uh, secured it under the front of the motor just to raise that worm gear up a little bit from the drive gear. So that, looking good. Uh, last thing we have to do now is install the uh, pickups um, onto two of the wheels and uh, see how that runs and if that's the case uh, just have to wire it permanently and uh, we're good to go.